This is the 415ers podcast brought to you by the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Please download, rate, subscribe, uh, follow us on social media. Okay, Mark, I, I do think that the other part we have to talk about is, you know, we, we touched on the quarterbacks and kind of their tasks ahead of them. And, and I, I feel like Brock Purdy has a more difficult task, despite having maybe some of those, you know, the, those yak bros on the outside that Jalen Hurts does not. But that's because the Eagles love to move the ball on the ground, set up deep passes. Jalen Hurts with time, RPOs. They keep the defense guessing as to what they want to do, and they can take the top off. I do think that the Niners secondary, we're talking about groups, units, players that need to play big. You know, Kyle Shanahan needs to have a great game. Brock Purdy doesn't maybe have to do as much as Jalen Hurts does, but has to be good in critical spots. That secondary for the 49ers has to play its best game because this is going to be the best set of weapons that they have faced, perhaps even better than their own when you look at the amount of explosive players on both the outside as well as in the slot for Philadelphia. Charvarius Ward and Diamador Lenore, all eyes are on you because we have seen DK Metcalf take advantage of the Niners secondary in the playoffs. I know it didn't matter. We've seen CeeDee Lamb from the slot take advantage of the Niners secondary, although it didn't end up mattering. If A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Scott are, are able to pick up chunk plays, explosive plays down the field, I do not know if the 49ers for a third straight time can overcome that based on everything else they also have to worry about on the other side of the football. I do think that D'Amador Lenore, who has played well in his first two playoff games, of course had the interception last week against Dak Prescott. He has been you know, kind of picked on this year. He's going to have to play like he did last week as opposed to some of his bad games throughout this season. And Traverius Ward, who's been a great cover corner for the Niners, also needs to step up. You're absolutely right. Uh, the, the the area that the, the Eagles have the edge over the 49ers, the first one that comes to mind is their defensive line against the Niners' offensive line. But after that, it is their wide receivers against this 49ers' secondary defensively. Uh, if there you had to pick a weak spot of the Niners' defense, it is, you know, their corners. Um, and that's nothing against those guys, nothing against Mooney Ward, who's been phenomenal for the most part this season. And Diamond or Lenore, who's been thrust into a starting role, has done a good job. And, and Jimmy Ward at the nickel spot has been, I think, way better than anyone expected. It's just because when you have the best linebacking core in football, excuse me, in football, and you have Nick Bosa leading an incredible defensive line, kind of by default, the weakness is your defensive secondary. But you mentioned what DK Metcalf did to Charvarius Ward, Mooney Ward, just a couple of weeks ago. 10 catches, 136 yards, and two touchdowns, including a 50-yard strike in the first half that, for a moment, changed the momentum, and in, in, I think for the first time in that game, put fear in 49ers fans. He was incredible. And you look at maybe what what's his comp, around the NFL, who is most like DK Metcalf? It's his college teammate, A.J. Brown, who's the star receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I think A.J. Brown, after a relatively down game against the Giants, is licking his chops in this matchup. I think he knows he has the opportunity to have a big game. And, and kind of similar to what I said earlier, Evan, I think the Eagles need a little bit more from Jalen Hurts than the Niners need from Brock Purdy. If Jalen Hurts is able to deliver in that regard, he is able to perform up to the level that the Eagles need, a big part of that will be A.J. Brown. How is their connection working? Can the Niners limit him? Are they going to throw some double teams his way? Are they going to, I don't know, throw zones to, to his side of the field to, to try to limit him as, as much as they possibly can? I'm not sure what the best way to, to attack him is because you've seen D.K. Metcalf simply run past uh, Mooney Ward in man coverage. They even had some safety help, but it didn't matter. He went up and caught the ball anyway. DK Metcalf uh, and his success against this offense or against this defense, excuse me, worries me uh, if, I, if I'm rooting for the 49ers because A.J. Brown is so much like DK Metcalf. Uh, the Eagles have an advantage in that regard. And if they are going to win this game, Evan, they're going to need to target A.J. Brown early and often because he is as capable as any receiver in the NFL to take over a game. Yeah, it's pretty wild that your number two receiver, by the way, is a Heisman winner <laughs> Yeah, in, in Devontae Smith. But and, and that takes me to my next point. I, I actually do think that this I, I know that, you know, last week and, you know, we were kind of hoping for a bigger game from Brandon Ayuk. 
I do think this will be a Brandon IU game mm. because he is the best route runner on this 49ers team. And out, outside of, of course, Christian McCaffrey and, and Debo Samuel from the backfield doing their thing, I think if the 49ers are going to be able to move the ball through the air, it's going to have to be through IU because, look, the, the Eagles got some great corners. I mean, Darius Slay is the big name, but James Bradbury statistically has been a better corner this year for Philadelphia. They have two lockdown guys who can play man, who can play zone, and they can do it all. Brandon Ayuk, in my opinion, is the, is the smartest wide receiver as far as knowing where the openings in the defense are, as well as that footwork that allows him to get open against a guy like Slay or Bradbury. It's going to be a tall task, but I think that Brock Purdy on third down is going to need a go-to guy. In my opinion, that's Brandon Ayuk. I know he found Juwan Jennings you know, over the middle, down the tail end of that first half against Dallas that that opened up that field goal opportunity to give San Francisco the lead going into the break. And Juwan Jennings might have to also, with his physicality and size, be an option for Brock Purdy. But I think Brandon Ayuk is the guy, if we're looking at number two receivers, because I do think Debo Samuel will be, you know, he'll do his thing, although I think it's going to be more so out of the backfield. I think you're right, A.J. Brown is going to be physically difficult to stop for San Francisco, he's going to get busy as well. But we're looking at number twos. Brandon Ayuk needs to have a bigger day than Devontae Smith. And I think he's up for the task with what he's shown this season, being able to create a lot of separation, specifically in go-to downs. And if we're talking about Washington converting 12 third downs against the Eagles, it might take that from the 49ers to beat them on the road on Sunday. And I think Ayuk is going to be a big part of that. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of this episode talking about the importance of just getting the ball to their weapons on the outside quickly. And I think I name dropped specifically McCaffrey and Debo. If there is one guy, I think offensively for the 49ers that can and will need to beat the Eagles down the field a bit more, I think it is Brandon Ayuk. Because as you mentioned, he is as good of a route runner as any. I also think George Kittle can kind of fit in the group in which or in which Kyle Shanahan can get creative with. We've seen some tight end screens uh, quickly throw out to the flat with a couple of wide receivers out there blocking it. You get uh, Trent Williams out in motion out there as well. And you can, you know, have him lead the way for George Kittle, who's incredible with the ball in his hands. Uh, but if there was one guy, maybe to keep a defense honest, Evan, and not to let them to, I don't know, stack the box, which they really don't need to do with how good their front seven is, uh, maybe you know they play a little bit more wary of the Niners trying to get the edge on those quick throws outside. The one guy who can draw that defense back and keep them honest is Brandon Ayuk. I'm not so sure I, I see a huge game in him. I know I called for that last week, and and he only had two catches, so I was way off on that one. But I think he's going to play an important part regardless of what his stats show at the end of the game because, again, he is that threat over the middle of the field that has to keep the secondary honest for the Philadelphia Eagles. Otherwise, the Niners are going to struggle to have success in that short passing game and in the run game. So, Ayuk, I agree with you. He is going to be hugely important in this game, regardless of the number of catches he gets. Yeah, uh, first on George Kittle, it is kind of interesting how Brock Purdy, whenever a play breaks down, just seems to look for number 85 <laughs> and, and, and has been able to find him, to his yeah. credit. I also think Ayuk, when we talk about a big game, I, honestly, I think a, a four-catch, 65-yard performance can play bigger than it sounds on paper if you're making plays like he did on the third and 16 in the first half against Dallas, being able to, behind the sticks, get to the marker, make the catch, extend drives, because that's what the 49ers are going to have to do, pass, I think, in third downs after setting up whatever they want to do offensively with the run. So there's obviously a lot to look for, Mark. Uh, but with a couple minutes left here in the episode in our preview episode before the 49ers take on the Eagles on Sunday at noon in Philadelphia, we got to get down to predictions, Mark. Who do you think is going to come out on top of this football game? Uh, this is a this is a tough one because two and a half point spread. What the total is forty six. Yeah, it's, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it down there. Eagles minus two and a half over under at forty six and a half. I think Evan. The way you have to pick this game, even if you're picking the over-under, I think it's related to the side, related to who wins. 
I think if the Eagles win this game, the over hits. I feel like if they are going to win this game, they need it to be a little more up and down. They need to put some points on the board, and they could afford maybe forcing the Niners into some situations where they feel a little uncomfortable throwing the ball, playing from behind. I think that's how they win this game. And as a result, if you think the Eagles are going to win, I, I think you might want to take the over. However, if you think the Niners are going to come out on top, I think it's going to have to play out relatively similar to Dallas last week. I do think both teams will score more uh, because the Philadelphia offense is better than Dallas. The, the respect the Niners have for Jalen Hurts is higher than they had for Dak Prescott. Uh, ultimately, I think I got to stick with the 49ers. I will pick 23 to 20 in favor of the 49ers. The under hits the Niners win straight up 23 to 20. I think it's a fourth quarter Robbie Gold field goal. That's the difference. Not necessarily saying it comes in the final seconds, but he's been incredible in the postseason. Um, I think the Niners win by a field goal and, and they escape Philadelphia and advance to the Super Bowl. 23 to 20 is my pick. It's interesting. I, I kind of I feel the opposite, Mark. Honestly, I, I feel like Philadelphia can win this football game, even keeping it close and tight and low scoring. I just think it's going to be one of those 12 round prize fights in which, you know, a big uppercut here, a big thrown right there, a jab here is going to be the difference in this football game. I think it comes down to whoever wins the turnover battle. And San Francisco has done that throughout this season. But I also do not believe that San Francisco has faced a team like this before. You can make the same case for Philadelphia. Uh, but I do think with what the Eagles have shown me over the course of this season, I feel like I've been pretty consistent about this. I feel like they are slightly a better football team. And with home field advantage, to me, that just barely puts them over the top. I, I hope I'm wrong, Mark. I hope that the 49ers are able to get to Glendale, Arizona, and Brock Purdy can go home and play for a Super Bowl against whoever comes out of the AFC, whether it be Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow. But I do think that this hill is just a little bit too high to climb for San Francisco. I think Philadelphia wins this football game 21-17. to 17. Mm. It's a low-scoring game that the under hits, the Eagles do cover at home. Uh, but I think it's going to be a tight game, and I think it's going to be one that's going to come down to the wire and that we're going to remember for a long time. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it ends in celebration. Uh, but un unfortunately, my gut tells me that the birds fly on to Arizona. It's it's really difficult to pick against the Philadelphia Eagles because you just look at their defense, specifically the front and some of the names that are on there. Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Josh Sweat. Hassan Reddick, who was on Nick Bosa's tail for sacks leader this year. And then you have off the bench Jordan Davis, a first-round pick this year, who is incredible. Linval Joseph, Nadama Kunsu, Robert Quinn, all the wily vets who are coming in trying to chase a ring, and, and they've been phenomenal for them. I mentioned the acquisitions of Joseph Linval and Adam, or Linval Joseph, excuse me, and Nadama Kunsu, who have turned around the run defense for Philadelphia. The other thing that is allowing is it's keeping Fletcher Cox fresher because he doesn't need to play every single snap. And, and he's getting up there in age. He's pretty experienced. So he's fresher as a result of those two guys. So uh, I got to stick to my guns and, and, and think the food and enter is going to come out on top in this one. But it is, it is extremely difficult to do because of how good that defensive front is. And again, I think that just hammers home the point that Niners need to neutralize that and how do you do that? You get the ball out of Brock Purdy's hands quick to your speedsters on the outside. If the Niners can control the edge offensively, I think they have this one. But it's going to come down to the wire. Yeah, I don't think it's insurmountable. And I don't mean to make it sound like it's a David versus Goliath. I mean, it's a two-point ball game. And, and yeah. on a neutral side, it's probably a pick -em in this case. But like you mentioned, I just think that the defense is slightly better. I think the offense is slightly more capable of putting up points. And even though Kyle Shanahan to me has the advantage as does D'Amico Ryan's on the sideline. Um, I, I just don't know if it's enough to overcome the talent of Philadelphia, because again, they'll have all 22 of their starters out there. Should Trey Maddox in, in the slot be out there on defense for them. So they've been able to stay healthy as well. They don't have a lot of holes. And you talk about the defensive line, like they have four guys with 10 or more sacks. 
I know Nick Bosa is the defensive player of the year, and he's got 18 and a half, and that's incredible. But the next highest sack total on the Niners is five. Like, if Nick Bosa, in my opinion, does not wreck this game, it's going to be very difficult defensively for the 49ers. And Nick Bosa has not wrecked each of the last two postseason games the way he did his first six of his playoff career. I think he's got to be huge. I think that Brock Purdy has to be able to convert over 50% of his third downs against the number one pass defense in the NFL. I think Christian McCaffrey is going to have to show up in a way that he did not do last week. I think Elijah Mitchell is going to have to be as physical as he was in the second half last week against Dallas. And I think that the 49ers as a team are going to have to play not perfect football, but by far their best game of the season to beat the Eagles. I'm not sure if the effort last week against Dallas is good enough to go into Philadelphia and win that football game. Meanwhile, Philadelphia is a team that appears to be getting healthy at the right time and is trending in the right direction. I I feel like they're the team, and actually I'll say this. Hopefully it'll make 49ers fans feel better. Whoever wins this football game is going to win the Super Bowl. Mm. In my opinion, the NFC is the better conference. These are the two best teams in football. And should the 49ers beat Philadelphia, they will be favored against whoever comes out of the AFC and, in my opinion, will have an advantage over Joe Burrow or even Patrick Mahomes. Wow. So I think this is in a lot of ways similar to kind of how people felt in 2013 against the Seahawks to where on the other side is Denver, who got absolutely destroyed in the Super Bowl. That Seahawks 49ers game was a Super Bowl. In my opinion, this NFC championship game is the Super Bowl. Whoever wins in the NFC will win it all. I like it. It's a hot take. I don't know. The AFC has been uh, considered the best conference, but but maybe the, the, the NFC a little top-heavy. These top two teams, as good as any, uh, we'll see how, how those lines do come out. Uh, you got me thinking, you mentioned uh, after Nick Bosa, Samson Ebukam, five sacks to for second best in the Niners. Charles O'Menehu is third with four and a half. I feel like we do need to mention the Niners have said they're going to let the legal process play out with Charles O'Menehu which seems like he's going to play. He's he's practicing with the team all week. It does clear the way for that. We don't need to offer our, our opinions on that. I know we talked about it earlier this week. It does seem like he's going to play. You mentioned the Eagles very likely uh, could have all 22 normal starters there. The 49ers have been a little banged up in practice this week. I know Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Elijah Mitchell showed up on the injury report throughout this week. Not a big deal. Do not worry. They will all play. Uh, it seems like the Niners will have everyone they were expecting to have. The Eagles, uh, the one name is Avante Maddox to keep an eye on in the slot there defensively. Uh, but this sh- should be a matchup, as you mentioned, between two teams uh, that have their their A teams out there. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. Sunday can't get here soon enough for me. Uh, real quickly, Mark, who you got coming out of the AFC that's going to lose to either of these teams? Uh, it's hard for me to pick against Joe Burrow. He's just too cool under pressure. The uh, the unknown with Patrick Mahomes' ankle, I think I got to pick the Bengals to repeat as AFC champs. I got Cincy as well. Although, something about Mahomes, I know he hasn't beaten Joe Burrow yet, but I do feel like... I can't, it's hard to pick against him. It's hard to pick against either of these guys. I don't know what to do. Yeah. No, it's some. I think Cincinnati is going to be the one to face the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Uh, but it would not shock me if if Patrick Mahomes pulls a rabbit out of his yeah, whatever boot he's gonna be wearing for his high ankle <laughs> sprain on, on Sunday. Uh it should be interesting though. I look forward to it, Mark. Yes, me too. Looking forward to that. And then uh regardless, win or lose, uh we'll get back with another episode of the four one fivers to recap it all. Yeah, should be coming your way uh, later on Sunday night. We'll record it as quickly as we can and get this episode out to your reaction episode. Hopefully it's a 49ers win. Marks thinks so. I do not. But either way, this has been the 415ers podcast on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Mark Grandy, Evan Giddings. We'll talk to you Sunday night after the NFC Championship between the 49ers and the Eagles. Hopefully they can get it done.